Hey guys, it's me again. It's time for another toy review. This time it's going to be another oh, another uh, member of the Ultra Heroes series. This time we're going to be taking a look at Ultra Seven. This is the the uh, number three in the uh, Ultra Heroes series. I skipped Zoffy because I plan on getting him later, or something later this year, or something. But we get this uh, camera kind of focused on. There we go. Just had to use the box to focus this because sometimes this camera gets blurry, but whatever. This is another this is another vinyl figure just like Ultraman. And so you're not getting much out of articulation, but still. Anyways, anyways, this was released in the line, the 2009 version of the line, as you see from the box that you saw before. And we'll just get right on to detail. Just like, get up here. Just like Ultra, just like Ultraman, Ultra Seven was one of the original Ultraman by Ag Superaya before his death. Like he, both of the two Ultras that were first made were probably the only two made by a uh, Ig before his death. All the rest were made by his son Haru Naka, like a, or was it a? I forgot his son's name, but yeah. But anyways, as you can see here. Doesn't look too bad, aside from the weird, from the weird paint splotch there on his uh, on his breastplate there, and that kind of weird green splotches here. I don't recall him having green on here, although I could be wrong. But still, this is like a figure that has some sort of weird sporadic paint paint apps on his chest here, but it's not too much to detract from the figure. But anyways, you can see the beam lamp on his head. And that can fire the uh, emelium beam. You can also see his little pupils there in his in his different eyes, which are a stark bit different from Ultraman's here. But yeah, and then and sadly the eye slugger here is not removable since this is just a vinyl figure, it's part of the figure. Although they did try to make up for it by just painting those little gaps in black, except for this red part. But it's no big gripes there. There are his different shapes of ears there. And here you can see the back of his back of his body here. You can see these little vent things that were part of the suit. Just to keep the, the suit actor hydrated or cool or whatever. You can also see the skin you can also see the little suit flap here on his back, just like another suit accuracy like Ultraman's neck here. Yeah, and you can see all the all the little pa all the little details like like they actually made it look like he's wearing boots and gloves here. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, you can see the little leather glove shape on his hands there, and along with this, along with the signature silver striping on his body that goes all the way through his uh onto his legs and back here. Yeah, so that's it for detail. Now let's try some articulation. Just like every other Ultra figure out there, and I will say this, if you have one Ultra, you basically have them all. They only have three. The arms, and the waist. It's a bit easier to, to turn Ultra 7's waist because he's a little bit rounder. Not too round, but yeah. It's not too bad. You can still make this work with anything if you feel like playing with it or whatever. But now let's get on to sizing. First off, first off, I'll just show the Ultra that I keep comparing him with, namely Ultraman here. See, Ultraman is a little bit taller than Ultra. Why did you fall over? Stand back up. Yeah, that's the problem with these figures sometimes. Some of these uh, figures have this problem where their legs are molded kind of uh, weird and they keep falling over but but you can just you can correct that easily but still as you can see Ultraman is a little bit taller than seven and I can I can understand why because Ultraman is actually older than Ultra seven but regardless it's it still looks good it still looks good 
And now let's scale him up with the monster that he fought, that seven fought in the series, Elaking. Now this is not a very good scaling either because Elaking was supposed to be a little bit bigger than Ultra Seven, like like that or something. I don't know, like a that. But yeah, you can still make it work. You can still make this work. Now we'll scale it up with Godzilla. Let me fix your leg there, Goji. So yeah, basically the same result as Elaking. A little bit shorter than Ultra 7. He's supposed to be 40 meters. He's supposed to be 50 meters, but you can make it work. You can still make it work. And just for a quick, just for a little quick show, here's this box again. It's like the exact same box design as Ultraman's. I don't have to get him out because you've probably seen my review of him. Along with Ultra 7 stats. He has the Eye Slugger, the Ultra Eye, and the Wide Shot, which is like a wider version of the Specium Beam. He's in that Wide Shot position right now, as you can see there. There's his footmark. He's around, yeah, he's 40 meters, just as I mentioned before. And he's 35,000 meters. 35,000 tons. That's how much he weighs. Yeah. Like most of the other uh, Ultras around the, around the 40 meter size. So anyways, same stuff we've seen before. It's a good box. Not a good, not a bad box design. So anyways, I got this figure for around um, $17 or whatever. It's not... Focus. It's not too bad. Um, you could always they usually go for a little higher prices, but I keep getting this figure f from from the same seller that I got Ultraman and Gamora, so it's not too not too bad. Anyways, this is the Crazy Bling, and I'll see you in my review of Elokine. Duh.